Hey y'all, Coach Miriam here, and I just wanted to come on here and talk about how you are a whole solution wrapped up in a body. You are the solution to the problem because when you accept Christ into your life, you have new DNA that you can access from, from the spirit. You are made up of three parts. You are a spirit, a soul, and a body. You're three in one, okay? So within your spirit is power, love, and a sound mind. And we find that in 2 Timothy verses 1 and 7. So having power, love, and a sound mind that exists within your spirit is the perfect algorithm for any circumstance in your life and in your relationships to change. Now, your soul consists of the will, the emotions, and your mind. So when you look at the correlation between the spirit and the soul, you will see the similarity there. Spirit, power, love, and a sound mind, and soul, will, emotions, and your mind. So then we need to learn how to let our souls serve our spirit versus being a servant to our bodies, because when the soul is wounded, okay, the soul then becomes a servant to the body if left wounded. The body is temporary. This right here, I'm not being negative when, I, when I'm saying, you know, we're dying each day, right? There's a, an average life expectancy, and I'm not talking, I'm not speaking premature death on anybody, you know, I'm not being religious or anything like that. I'm just facing the fact that each day, right, um, thank God is another day that we're living. Each day you wake up, you have purpose. But it also we're aging and aging is also dying each day, right? Um, we're not immortal, right? We're only, our spirit is eternal. We are going somewhere after we leave this place. But going back to um, the soul, if the soul is wounded and left wounded, it can begin to serve the body. And the body is focused on temporary things because the body itself is temporary. So what happens if the soul is serving the body, which is temporary? It focuses on what is tangible and it focuses, it focuses on temporary things. It, it, it lacks faith because faith is for um, what I cannot see. It's still substance, substance that exists spiritually, but it's not something I can see. The body is when I'm serving my body, my focus is on what I can see. So a wounded soul um, is fearful. It wants to retreat. It lacks discipline. It's unstable. It's insecure. It blames others. It remains a victim. Uh, it remains sad. It develops unhealthy coping strategies such as eating, the emotional eating. All right. Because we know I, I like to grub. OK, we, we got to eat to stay alive. Right. Um, but I'm talking about emotional eating, a, an unhealthy relationship with food to bring some sort of comfort because of emotional pain. Um, it, an, other unhealthy strategies could be the use of alcohol or hooking up with somebody on the dating app. Come on, somebody. Um, pornography and uh, drugs and things like that. Why? So why does a wounded soul um, end up serving the body because the body wants to feel good and it seeks out temporary pleasures, especially when there is emotional pain. And the difference between the body is that the spirit is eternal, right? The body is temporary. So the spirit seeks out an eternal purpose. An eternal purpose is what many people are lacking. They don't know what they're made for. They don't know why they're here. They know that there's something inside of them or they want to know that there's something special about them. But many people are lacking that that spiritual knowledge. Right. So the eternal purpose is all about you knowing your purpose. It's about you being able to build. Many of us are so broken. Come on, because the soul is winded. But your, your eternal purpose is about you building. It's about you creating. It's about you helping others. An eternal purpose is fulfilling. And it's so fulfilling that, that you won't need to fill yourself up with unhealthy things. 
It's literally the difference between what is temporary versus what is eternal. It's the difference between sabotage and salvation. It's the difference between being driven by faith and then being driven by fear. It's the difference between problems and solutions. And that's why when the word of God tells us that we need to walk in the spirit so we don't fulfill the lusts of the flesh, it's saying that you need to know who you are spiritually. And when you begin to apply those principles, it will heal you and empower you to be who God has designed you to be. And you are designed to win. There's a, a, a cheat code within your gene pool that you are now a part of when you accept Christ into your life. You're a part of the body of Christ. So you can access that cheat code by knowing who you are, because when the enemy wants to destroy you, he deceives you and he will then have you focusing on people or being fearful or the emotional pain or the fear of being hurt again, that I then become a recluse. I become a shell of myself. And um, maybe I think, okay, just prayer. Y'all, I've prayed and prayer is a part of the solution. As a matter of fact, knowing, uh, having a relationship with God is is paramount. Like it makes sense. Like if, if my vehicle um, needs fixing, there's nothing like taking my Jeep to a Jeep Wrangler place. You know, so we got to learn how to take ourselves back to the manufacturer and the person that actually created you. That's that's the first part. And the second part is receiving counsel. Right. Uh, there is safety um, in counsel. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. I don't have to lean into my own understanding because my own understanding can actually trip me up because my un understanding um, will suggest that, well, hold on, they, they bullied you or they talked about you behind your back. Don't, you know, don't go live or don't, don't go speak to these people. Um, don't write the book. Don't start the business because what if, um, you know, you get burnt in the process? Come on. What if you fail? So my own understanding can actually sabotage me, but I came to tell somebody that you are made to win and you are made to make an impact and you are the solution. Even the scripture says it like, the, like this, you are the salt and the light, but how can a light be a light if it remains hidden? So many of us are hiding or we underestimate the healing that we actually need. Sometimes we even hyper spiritualize ourselves and we're like, okay, no, you know, I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'm, I'll be all right. And, but we're, but are not actually feeling that way. Right. Like I need to speak it, but I also need to believe it. There, there's a connection between the two. I don't want to say something, but I'm not actually uh, living out that thing. It needs to be faith and works because faith without works is dead. But we need life. <laughs> we need to live life more abundantly. So it's time to get to know your spiritual DNA. Many of us have experienced those traumas and we've experienced attacks and we're disconnected with God. And I'm not talking about just being religious. Again, I've seen what religion looks like. And um, there, there are many religious folks, you know, who, um, who are fearful, who are timid, who are wounded, who actually, who, you know, uh, do not forgive, who are very critical towards themselves, very critical towards others, towards others, and they lack relationship with God. But I'm talking about a genuine relationship with the creator, right? The Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Right. We're walking around with these wounded souls. Yet the word of God says, I want you to prosper even as your soul prospers. Don't underestimate your mental health. Don't underestimate the healing that is needed. You need healing in your soul, which can come through therapy which can come through counseling. As long as you have a head on your shoulders, you have mental health, right? And you need a relationship, not religion, a relationship with God, which is your spiritual growth. Both. We need both. So if you do not know how to use the algorithm, that is okay, right? That just means that it is time to define your DNA and know who you truly are. So you can look at this link over here. Um, it might be down here in the, in the chat or in the information box where you can um, 
book a consultation with me. And also, if you're interested, I have a new book out called Pureography, Release the Mental Weight to Receive Mental Freedom. And uh, you can also find the link um, in the comment section below. It is on Amazon. And I pray this bless you. And if it did, share something that you learned that sticks out to you. Share something um, and, and maybe even share this video with somebody else. So Thank you. God bless you. I love you. And Jesus loves you more. Bye.